Package delivered. A new Cygnus spacecraft is now on board the International Space Station, the arrival following its launch on board a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket for the first time. One-Shot Space Station Voyager Space announced the selection of SpaceX's Starship rocket to ferry its commercial space station to low Earth orbit, the timeline for one of the first commercial space stations hoping to replace the ISS. Meet the crew. NASA announced the three astronauts and the cosmonaut who will make up the quartet flying on board the SpaceX Crew-9 mission, who's in the lineup and when they're expected to head to space. And testing campaign. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser space plane is going through some of its final checkouts before it heads to Florida for its inaugural launch on board a United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket. Spaceflight now is on the road to be able to see the Dream Chaser spacecraft and its shooting star. So from the Armstrong test facility, this is news from the press site. And lift off of Artemis 1, we rise together back to the moon and beyond. Mission copies on board the International Space Station. Go Falcon, Go Dragon, Go Group F. This allows us to go faster and to have better technology. When we start putting humans on that vehicle, the excitement is even going to amp up even more. Thanks for taking the time to answer our questions. Hello, I'm Will Robinson Smith for Spaceflight Now. Thank you so much for taking part of your day to join us. Really excited to talk about all of the news of the week. Again, we are on the road here in Sandusky, Ohio to talk about Dream Chaser, see the spacecraft for ourselves. So we're not gonna be joined by live guests for this edition of News from the Press site, but we of course wanna go through all of the news with you. So let's get started with this. A busy week started off with a NASA mission launch that brought together some new partners. For the first time, a Northrop Grumman Cygnus spacecraft launched on board a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. The noontime mission, dubbed NG-20, lifted off from Pad 40 over at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on Tuesday. On board was more than 8,200 pounds of science and supplies for the astronauts on board the International Space Station. SpaceX became the flight option for Cygnus after the Russian invasion of Ukraine forced the cessation of new Russian-made rocket parts for the Antares rocket. That meant that Northrop Grumman's Antares 230 rocket flew out its last mission in 2023. The Cygnus spacecraft arrived at the orbiting outpost shortly before 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday. It was captured and berthed by NASA astronauts Jasmine Mugbelli and Laurel O'Hara using the Canada Arm 2 robotic arm. Moving from a cargo mission to a crewed one, the four astronauts of the AX-3 private astronaut mission bid a fond farewell to the rest of Expedition 70 on board the space station. Well, it's been a, an incredible, um, busy, and fun-filled two weeks up here. I am very proud of my AX-3 crewmates who helped their agencies achieve all of their science objectives, technology demonstrations, as well as the outreach events. The crew is preparing to depart the ISS on board the Crew Dragon Freedom. Speaking of astronaut crews, NASA announced the four members of the forthcoming Crew-9 mission to the ISS this week. Zaina Cardman, a member of the 2017 astronaut class, will command the mission. She's joined by two other NASA astronauts, pilot Nick Haig and mission specialist Stephanie Wilson. Mission specialist and cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov will round out the four-person crew, who will launch no earlier than August 2024. The announcement came on the heels of NASA stating that the Crew-8 mission is poised to launch to the space station no earlier than Thursday, February 22nd, though the timing of that is still somewhat in flux due to pad availability. Over in Southern California, for the first time since 2011, a space shuttle was fully staffed in launch configuration. The California Science Center completed its so-called go-for-stack process with the hoisting of Space Shuttle Endeavor into place, joining with the external tank and solid rocket boosters. This marks the completion of the first shuttle stacking outside of a NASA or Air Force facility. 
It also comes about a month before SpaceX's Crew Dragon Endeavor prepares to take the Crew 8 Quartet up to the ISS. The future Samuel Ocean Air and Space Center is planned to open in 2025. Before we head on to the next news story, let's talk about the week that was in spaceflight. For the sake of consistency, the dates will correspond with the launch times based on Universal Coordinated Time, or UTC. The week kicked off on January 28th with the first multi-satellite launch from Iran. A Samorg rocket launched the MADA satellite along with two nanosats. On January 29th, SpaceX launched a Starlink flight from NASA's Kennedy Space Center. The Falcon 9 rocket supporting the Starlink 6-38 mission lifted off from Launch Complex 39A at 0110 UTC, sending 23 more satellites up to low Earth orbit. That was followed less than four hours later at 0557 UTC by another Falcon 9 launch. This time, it was the Starlink 7-12 mission from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. There were 22 Starlink satellites on this mission. A third Falcon 9 launch capped off the week for SpaceX with the aforementioned NG-20 mission. That launched at 1707 UTC from Cape Canaveral. With this launch, SpaceX completed 10 launches in one calendar month for the first time. It was also the first time SpaceX reached 100 orbital launches within 365 days, not counting Starship test flights. Rocket Lab launched its first Electron mission of the year at 0637 UTC on January 31st. Four 16U Spire Global Built satellites were launched in partnership with North Star Earth and Space. Finally, the Chinese Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, or CASIC, launched a Long March 2C rocket at 2344 UTC on February 2nd. On board was a batch of 11 satellites for car manufacturer Geely Automotive. This is the second group of satellites for a constellation that will help the testing of autonomous driving vehicles. Coming back to space news, Starlab Space Inc., a joint venture between Voyager Space and Airbus, announced its selection of SpaceX's Starship rocket to send its Starlab station to low Earth orbit in one launch. The company didn't disclose the dollar amount of the launch contract, but said the launch would more than likely occur before the ISS is scheduled to be decommissioned in 2030. A spokesperson told Spaceflight Now that it aims to complete its preliminary design review by the end of 2024. Speaking of Starship, Kathy Kerner, the Associate Administrator for NASA's Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate, and the Moon to Mars Deputy Associate Administrator, Amit Kshatriya, traveled down to Starbase in Texas to discuss Starship development. The vehicle is the human landing system for both the Artemis 3 and 4 missions. In a statement on LinkedIn, HLS program manager Lisa Watson Morgan said they've made, quote, significant progress in six months. She added that they were able to see a, quote, functioning life support mock-up for future lunar missions. Watson Morgan also said that last week they were in Florida visiting Blue Origin and getting an update on the progress of its lunar lander as part of a monthly series of reviews and tours. Speaking of the moon, NASA announced on Wednesday that the initial phase of its fission surface power project is wrapping up. Back in 2022, teams led by Lockheed Martin, Westinghouse, and IX, a joint venture between Intuitive Machines and X Energy, were each awarded $5 million to design initial concept proposals for nuclear fission systems that could last 10 years on the moon without human intervention. In its latest update, NASA said it plans to extend the time on these Phase 1 contracts, quote, to gather more information before Phase 2. That next phase will involve industry solicitation for the final reactor design. That open phase two solicitation is expected in 2025. And that brings us to the reason why we're here in Sandusky, Ohio, to talk about the Dream Chaser spacecraft and its shooting star cargo area. So let's get into it with both officials from NASA as well as Sierra Space themselves. Dream Chaser is set to be the payload on board United Launch Alliance's second certification flight of its new Vulcan rocket. Here at the Armstrong Test Facility, the spacecraft is undergoing shake table testing after it was mated with its shooting star module. It has more environmental testing after that before it's ready to head down to the Cape. Jimmy Kenyon, the director of NASA's Glenn Research Center, described the test campaign as a boon for NASA as well as for Sierra Space. Having a successful test here means that we get good data, that Sierra Space gets good data and can make good decisions going forward. Uh, so this test is a big thing for us, it's a big deal for us to be able to perform it successfully and, and by doing so and, and certainly this sort of an event uh, brings the opportunity to bring additional companies in. Just living in space in general you find out that uh, you need real estate and that real estate can get filled up with 
stuff you don't need anymore. The trash, if you bring up an experiment, it's gonna have, um, you're bringing back samples. It's going to have containers that become trash over time. We lived in the station when the trash was encroaching into the living space practically. So it gets to be a huge issue, a major issue actually. So the ability to take home trash, not have to give up space uh, for science return because this is gonna be a disposable compartment um, is you know, combining all the, all the best ways to get rid of stuff from the space station or to bring things home. You can see more from our reporting trip by clicking on the card at the top of the screen. And that'll do it for this edition of News on the Press site, Road Version. We'll be back with our live show next Friday. So we'll announce our guests on Thursday. If you want to ask them any questions or questions for me, be sure to start thinking of those and we'll be able to take those live using YouTube Super Chats. So for all of our team here at Space Flight Now, for Michael, Adam, and Stephen Young, I'm Will Robinson-Smith for Space Flight Now at Astra.